Daniel O'Keefe appeared to have the perfect life, but in July 2011, the 25-year-old left his family home and never returned. After two years of searching, his sister is determined to find Daniel and bring him home. Lauren O'Keefe joins us this morning. Lauren, thanks for coming in. Uh, you guys were obviously, you know, as a family, but you were a very tight family, weren't you, growing up? Very close. I mean, being the younger two of four, Dan and I, when we were little, fought like cat and dog. But um, as we grew up in our teens, we formed a really close friendship and um, still have a very strong bond. And, and you say, Lauren, that he'd accomplished a lot by his early 20s, but what was life like for him? Dan had travelled the world twice by himself. He'd won the Pan Pacific Championships for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He'd opened up his own academy, had a beautiful girlfriend. Everything seemed to be perfect, but um, mental illness does not discriminate. And so oh, cool. despite the fact that Dan, you know, was handsome and talented and popular and loving and thoughtful and caring, um, he was really suffering. What was the first time you noticed or he sort of let on that he was suffering with depression? About six months before Dan went missing, he was diagnosed with depression So and there was anxiety. no clues, even you know, as close as you were as a family before that, you thought maybe there was, that something was awry? I think a couple of years before he was actually diagnosed, I mean, it was difficult because I was living overseas, he was overseas, and when I was in Australia, I was in Melbourne, he was in Geelong. I thought that the, the spark in his eye was sort of going down a bit and something was wrong. I didn't know exactly what it was, but... Um, when he went to a doctor and explained how he was feeling and was diagnosed, he was very open about um, his struggle with mental illness with the family. So we certainly tried our hardest to support him through it. And then things seemed to be turning around hmm. and then he vanished. So yeah. tell us about what happened that day. It was a Friday morning in the middle of winter and Dan had been down in Geelong, staying with mum and dad for a few nights. Um, up until that point, he'd been trying absolutely everything to get through depression. He was taking the medication, he was seeing a psychologist, he was reading books about how to be happy and thankfully he was never interested in drugs or alcohol or even smoking. He was a very healthy, fit young man. But then that morning, about 9.30, he'd just been chatting to Dad um, very casually in the kitchen and 10 minutes later, he was gone. He didn't take anything with him. Um, there was certainly no hint that this was going to happen. Uh, like I said, Dan and I were very close, so um, I'm still in shock that this is actually happening. T take me back to that day when, when it happens. How long do you guys, until you and your family have realised that, wait a minute, he's, he's gone, we can't find him? Well, being a 24-year-old, fully functioning male adult, um, we didn't panic. I mean, throughout the day, I was busy up in Melbourne working. It was a normal Friday. Um, it wasn't until around 7 o'clock that night that Dan was due to teach a class at his business up near Melbourne, and his girlfriend called Mum to say that he hadn't arrived, and that was very unlike Dan. He would never disappoint his students. They really looked up to him, and even if he was having a really tough day, he would still rock up to class and do a fantastic session. And, and so that's when the warning bells went off. That's when the warning bells went off, and Susie called Mum, and then Mum called the police a few hours later and it was registered. And, and that was almost two years ago now? That was, yeah, about 21 months 21 ago. 21 months ago. So yeah. you set up the Dan Come Home campaign. Yes. Tell us about that. Very early on, we realised that we needed to implore as much of the Australian public as humanly possible. So thankfully, social media exists in this day and age. And I turned to Facebook, I think, about 48 hours after he was registered as missing. And the Facebook page just took off. Um, we had thousands of followers almost instantly. And then that branched off into a Twitter account. And now we've got an Instagram account, a YouTube channel, the whole shebang, so that we can reach as many Australians as possible. Because all we need is for that one person to recognise yeah, exactly. And, and how about that, with that, you know, that sort of national exposure? I mean, is it leading to breaks? Are you finding Absolutely. leads on him? Absolutely. We would not be able to maintain this momentum without the public support. I mean, the people just alone on Facebook are following, sharing every post. The pictures are getting out there. They're actually printing off posters themselves, people that we don't even know, putting them in their neighbourhoods around the country. And 
we just would not be able to do this without that public support. So you did actually, in fact have uh, somebody contacted you to say that there was a sighting of Daniel in Queensland? Yes, just over a year ago. Um, it was about six months after Dan went missing, we announced a $50,000 reward for information leading to finding Dan and that attracted a lot of traditional media attention and so I did an interview um, with the project and that night thankfully a woman in Queensland had asked her husband to record the program and then she sat down the next day and watched the whole thing and realised that a man that she'd spoken with at length two weeks prior was Dan, a missing person from Victoria. So that's when she went to her colleague, they both went onto our website, looked at all of the photographs and then called Crime Stoppers, which eventually five weeks later th that information was passed on to us and I flew up there and spent two months searching. Searching for him and now you're helping other people too, looking for missing loved ones. Well, I mean, I've got a turn a positive out of this yeah absolutely horrible, um, well Lauren look hopefully anybody who's watching today um, if you know if you see Daniel if you have any information on Daniel's whereabouts please visit the Dan come home website and we'll put the details on our website thank and, you for sharing that with us yeah, today thank Lauren you. thanks Lauren